I would like to share with you five affinity designer tips that help me work faster. I find them useful especially when I'm creating new surface pattern design, but I'm pretty sure you will find some use for them even when you're creating a new illustration. Tip number one is isolation mode. Isolation mode is useful especially when your document already contains a lot of layers and you want to make only one layer visible and work on it. I use this feature when I'm creating a new pattern and I'm working with a lot of elements so it's easier to overlook the changes that I want to make. Let me show you what I mean. Let's say I want to recolor the blue ribbons in pink to create more color variations for this pattern. Because I try to keep my layers organized by naming them color 1, color 2 and so on, which I always recommend. I can now leave only one layer visible by pressing Alt and clicking on the layer I want to keep visible. You can always select all the layers you don't need and simply hide them, but I find this way faster. If you want to make all the layers visible again, simply click on any other layer or somewhere else around the artwork. This brings me to tip number two, which is the feature called Select Same. Simply choose a part of the element on which you want to change the color, go to Select, Select Same and choose Fill Color and from here you can change the color to your liking. You can do the same thing with the stroke color, taking the same steps, but instead of fill color, you would choose stroke color. My tip number three is related to changing color of elements when creating a pattern by using symbols. In this case, you need to focus on creating your symbols right from the beginning, basically right after you place an element on the artwork, because if you forget, you won't be able to make the changes in all the elements at the same time. It may take some time to get used to, but I find this way of changing color super fast and it will make your life super easy. You basically place a new element on the artboard and go to symbols. If you can't find it anywhere, you'll go to window, scroll down and tick symbols. Now that you place the element on the artboard, you'll click on create in the symbols tab. This new symbol will be added into this little space and you can either drag it from here or you can copy and paste the first element. Now let's say you want to change this middle part of the ribbon. You find it in layers, click on it and change its color. And this change will be reflected in all the same symbols or elements. Tip number four is related to shortcuts and here I have two different ways of doing it. Let's have a look at the first way. So let's say I want to create a leaf. I press P on the keyboard to select the pen tool and create the shape of the leaf. But then I want to create some details into the leaf. I need to first select V on the keyboard, click somewhere on the artboard and select P on the keyboard again. I don't know what about you, but for me it's a lot of shortcuts changing. Instead, I can create whatever shape I want to create with the pen tool, click and hold V on the keyboard, click somewhere on the artboard and release the V key. This will automatically select the last tool I had selected, which was the pen tool, and I can easily create more shapes. The second way is to create the shape with the pen tool again. And now you want to click off somewhere by pressing V to create another shape. To come back to the pen tool, you don't need to press P, you can simply press V again as you already have the finger on it and this will bring back the pen tool. I use both ways depending on whichever shortcut comes to my mind in that moment and mostly when I'm using the pen or pencil tool or move tool because the drawing process can be a little bit tedious when you're creating just lines. And the last and fifth tip for today is to always use the same color and blending mode when you're creating shadows and highlights for all your shadows and highlights. For shadows, I always choose the darkest color in my design and set the lightness to 50 and saturation to 7. I tend to use color burn blending mode as I like that it keeps the color of the shadow nice and vivid. I do the same with highlights, but I usually go for screen or add blending mode. Occasionally, when I'm not happy with the results these two blending modes create, only then I go and try other blending modes. Affinity Designer saves the colors that you recently used in the swatches panel, but sometimes it can happen that the color I'm using for my shadow disappears, so I like to create a little circle next to the artboard and fill it with this color. Like this, I don't need to change lightness and saturation every time I need it, and I can quickly sample it from this little circle. Well guys, I hope you've enjoyed these 5 tips for working in Affinity Designer faster and let me know in the comments if you're already using some of these features or if you are going to add some of them into your workflow. See you in the next video. Ciao!